Hello, my name is Barry Mounts. I'm coming to you from the National Center for Biomedical Research and Training on the campus of LSU. Uh, we're a research and training agency that provides training to first responders for biological emergencies. The bulk of what we do deals with potential terrorist activities, but we also have training for natural outbreaks, such as what we're going on with now, or like the Ebola outbreak that happened years ago and things of that nature. Today we want to talk a little bit about some protective gear that is available to you, how it protects you, what its limitations may be, and then also some common problems that we've seen in past outbreaks or emergencies with the use of this equipment not being properly donned or doffed and things of that nature. So with that being said, we're going to jump right in. I've got several different pieces of equipment, but primarily the most common types of equipment that we'll see used in these incidents are gloves, face mask for respiratory protection, and then some type of eye protection. So we'll start with gloves first. Gloves, basically just your, your nitrile or some type of latex type gloves uh, are, are your best protection obviously for your hands, but one thing to think about with your gloves is that they're not just there to protect your hands, they're there to protect you from your hands because your hands are likely to become contaminated. The gloves can catch those contaminants, then we can remove them before we bring our hands to our face. So when we start talking about wearing gloves, we're going to just, I'm going to put these on and we're going to talk about some of the procedures and the proper ways to don and doff these gloves. In putting them on, obviously you would want to do this prior to entering any type of area where you need this type of protection and have them on and ready. They come in different sizes, so get something that fits you well. So the idea with gloves, you should put gloves on, accomplish your task, and then take them off immediately. They're not designed to be worn for long periods of time because at some point the glove is going to become more contaminated than what your hands would have been. So realize it's a short-term solution to do a particular task and then we remove them and wash our hands and then proceed. What we've seen in the past with gloves and other, other types of outbreaks or emergencies is that a common problem is people contaminating themselves when they're trying to take their gloves off. There's a lot of different methods to do this. Uh, first of all, we always say follow the manufacturer's instructions, but in general, they will always have some type of way to take the glove, rolling it off, so that no, nothing on the outside of the glove touches the rest of your body. So to do so, one common method, we call it like a beak method, like a bird's beak. You simply take one hand, grab the palm of the other hand, and then gradually roll the glove off. As you roll that glove off, you'll see it will come in inside out. Then I can take my clean hand, grab the inside of the other glove, and from there, pinch the second glove and pull that glove off. And then from there, I can discard them into a proper disposal container. Once I take my gloves off, I should always wash my hands just in case there was any residual contamination that got on my hands in that removal process. And when we start talking about bacterial or viral agents, they're particulates, such as, as, as this viral, the coronavirus. Uh, it is a particulate or a water droplet that's causing the spread of it. It's not like a true gas or a vapor. So when we start talking about protecting our respiratory tract, we're going to use a filter that is designed to filter particulates. Okay? So in this particular filter, it's called a P95. You probably have heard on the news and, and, and other areas, people keep talking about N95 mask, and that's the most common mask out there. It works very well to protect you in these cases. That letter and number designates the type protection it's going to give you. The letter could be N, which is the most common, R, or P. N means it's not designed to be used in atmospheres that have some type of an oil in it, like an industrial setting or a chemical manufacturing facility. It's not that the filter is designed to protect you from the oil, it's telling you, uh, or the letter is telling you whether or not the oil will degrade the filter. If it says N, you should not use it in those types of industrial settings. But in a medical situation, an N mask is perfectly acceptable. This particular one is a P, meaning oil proof. You could use it in medical applications or 
also some type of an industrial setting where there may be oil. Here again, not to protect me from the oil, but the oil wouldn't break the filter down that's protecting me from the particulates. Now the 95 is the efficiency of the mask. This is 95% efficient to filter out particles down to the 0.3 micron size, which at that small of a size, we're covering the potential areas that could be problems if you were to breathe in these particulates into your lungs. So it's 95% efficient. So the first thing we say is, well, I'd like to have even more. And they do make 99 or even in our P100 filters. The, the issue is this mask, the weak part of this mask, is not the filter part of it. It's the seal that you're going to get. Even if the filter was 100% efficient, we're going to have some leakage around this seal. And we can change that amount of leakage by properly donning it and making sure it stays on our, our face properly. But even if we properly don it, that face piece could have some leakage or will have some leakage. And as a general accepted practice, we say about a tenfold reduction on this mask. It will, it will reduce whatever the outside concentration is ten times before it gets inside your face piece for this particular type of quarter mask face piece. So to don it, here again, just like with the gloves, we will follow the manufacturer's instructions, but all of them basically follow the same general format. You place the filter in your hand, okay, then you'll put the filter under your chin and over your nose. Once you do that, we're going to roll the straps over. Some manufacturers say from the bottom, some say the top. It's just your personal preference or ha however your manufacturer has it designated. So we're going to put the face piece up to our face, around our nose, and then we're going to pull the top face strap over our head and high on our head, above our ears. Once that's completed, we're going to take the bottom strap, roll it over, and it's going to go below the ears on the neck. Then we can straighten those straps. Now, once we got it snug against our face, across the bridge of our nose, and if you wear glasses, you'll have to maybe adjust those, you're going to have some type of a bar across the top. That bar needs to be squeezed to your face. Now, commonly, you'll see people just grab it and squeeze it. We always want to use two hands, okay? And this is per manufacturer's instructions. They all recommend it the same way. Take both hands, squeeze that to form the contour of the bridge of the nose and your face. And then once you've done that, you could kind of hold the mask, breathe in and out to make sure you have no escaping air around the edge. Even if I have done that, there is still the potential of a small amount of leakage. So we want to be careful and always monitor that in dealing with it. So we accomplish our task. Now it's time to take the mask off. In taking the mask off, manufacturers will vary. Some will say hold the mask. Many will say don't touch it because it's contaminated. And it does have a high potential of being contaminated. The idea is we want to roll the mask off without any of the material or, that could be on this mask coming in contact with my face. So we'll grab the bottom strap, pull that strap over the head. The top strap is still holding it in place. And now, varying from manufacturer to manufacturer, some will say hold it, some will say hold the bottom strap. I tend to like to hold the bottom strap down just to keep things in place. And then I can go to the top strap and roll it off of my head. And then when it's time to remove the mask, bend forward just a little bit so if there were any particles fall off, it would fall away from your face not towards your face. So face pieces work very well if they're donned and doffed correctly. Also eye protection is another very important part of your PPE ensemble. Generally speaking we will put that on after the face piece and remove it before just simply because of the the movement on the face piece when you put those eye protection on. So some type of eye protection 
would go along with that. Gowns vary tremendously from manufacturer to manufacturer. When we start talking about doffing the whole PPE ensemble, I've had questions about well, should I take my gloves off first, my gown off first, my, my respirator. As a general idea, realize your hands are probably the most contaminated. Being that they're the most contaminated, you don't want to bring your hands to your face. Okay? So if, I'm, if I've got gloves and a face piece on, generally speaking, I'm going to remove my gloves before I bring my hands to my face. Now if I have a gown, I may decide to grab that gown on the outside and pull it away from me with my gloves still on and roll that gown off the same, in the same fashion. So hopefully we've talked about a couple different types of PPE that's available, showed you some of the proper donning and doffing techniques of that PPE so that you can adequately protect yourself in these situations. Remember, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. If you have any other questions, you can contact us via email at info, I-N-F-O, at ncbrt.lsu.edu. Thank you.